Hello everyone, it's Dr. Haas, and today I wanted to cover the facial anatomy and in particular focusing on the blood vessel supply of the face. Now as a surgeon with an ENT background, this is something that particularly interests me, particularly when it comes to dermal fillers. Uh, we've all heard of the dreaded vascular occlusions where blood vessel can be inadvertently injected with filler, leading to a loss of blood supply to target tissue. So let's dive into the anatomy and we'll discuss exactly the safety precautions that we take. So starting on this side here, we can see the common carotid artery which comes off the neck and that gives a branch called the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery then continues as the facial artery which supplies the majority of the mid face. Now as we follow this blood vessel we can note that it gives off two small branches called the inferior labial artery and the superior labial artery. These are deep arteries that supply the lip and therefore it's very important to note that when we're thinking about lip filler techniques like the Russian lip technique are pose a higher risk because of the fact that they are injected more deeply and therefore increase the chances of any potential major complications like a vascular occlusion. Now as we follow this main stem artery it turns into the angular artery which sits in the small line and this is an artery that's important when we're thinking about the nasolabial fold filler or small line filler. Um, and as this uh, artery starts to come out more superficially here, it's important that we use a, a wide bore cannula to perform this treatment to reduce the risk of potentially cannulating the blood vessel. Now, continuing on, we can see that this uh, angular artery then gives off two small branches. So one is the lateral nasal artery, which continues to supply part of the nasal tip. And as we go up, it also gives off the dorsal nasal artery, which again, alongside lateral nasal artery supplies the nose and is very relevant to us when we're thinking about the non-surgical rhinoplasty. Now, as we examine the remaining vessels, there are two uh, important vessels of note here. So we've got the supratrochlear artery and the supraorbital artery, which are both communicating together to supply the frown and the forehead area. And whenever we're thinking about doing any dermal filler treatment in this area, we want to use a, again, a wide bore cannula to reduce the chances of potentially cannulating any of these blood vessels and causing an obstruction. There are a few more blood vessels to bear in mind here. So another a branch of the external carotid artery is the superficial temporal artery as you can see here and this goes on to supply the temple part of our face and whenever we're thinking about doing any filler in this area it's important that we are very careful when placing the dermal filler in this region. And finally, one important blood vessel I want to speak about is, uh, looking lower down here in the lower face, is the ascending mental artery, which goes on to supply the chin. And once again, it's very important to be mindful of the position of this artery when we're thinking about placing chin filler. There are other blood vessels to consider. However, I hope this gives you a valuable insight into the importance of seeking treatments from a medically qualified individual who will help to significantly reduce the risks of complications.